Welcome back to the shop. I'm getting ready to start a new project and it's one I think people might find interesting. I need to take this slug of cast iron and turn it into an adapter plate for this 5 inch four jaw. Um, what will be interesting about it is I currently don't have a four jaw for my, for my lathe and I also don't have a chuck big enough to hold this so I'm going to have to do something you don't see very often and that's mount this up on the faceplate and then at least the preliminary machining will all be done on the faceplate. Um, for those that are interested, this is a Gator chuck, which is a, an import. It's, people have said good things about Gator. I had originally wanted a 5 inch bison, but for some reason over the last year, year and a half or so, bison chucks, specifically the smaller ones, have just gone up in price to a ridiculous level. For example, I paid a little over $200 for this, maybe like $220 or so, which is cheap for a, a, good, a decent chuck. But the bison equivalent to this chuck is over $1,000, and I think that's way too much. Um, so I don't know if you can see or not. I've already got dicum down. I've found the rough center since this is continuous cast, cast iron. It's not really that round. Um, let me take you over to the mill, and I'll show you how I'm going to start out. I've got the workpiece clamped down to the mill table. I put a punch mark right where I think the center is, and now I'm going to center drill it so I can use the uh, center in the tailstock to help hold it in place when I clamp it to the faceplate, which will become more obvious in a minute. So let me get this taken care of. Originally I thought I could get the camera in real close and give you guys some shots of actually setting this up, but this lathe is just too small, it's, the spacer in and around it's too confined to get the camera in a good location, so I'm just going to have to explain to you what I did. So all I did with this was I took my um, live center, put it in the tailstock, brought the tailstock up, and then pushed it down into that, that center hole I uh, did on the mill. So what that did is that clamped the, um, the workpiece to the faceplate nice and securely so that I could, it also centered it, which is a, we'll put that in quotes, centered it so that I didn't have to do that, you know, didn't have to indicate anything in or anything like that. Then I was just able to go through and then clamp it down with um, just regular hold down clamps. So the next step of this is going to be drilling and then, re and then boring, I should say, not reaming, boring the center hole out. So the next step is to mill, or I should say turn, a recess that's as wide as possible and just deep enough to get a completely continuous cut. That's going to be used as a reference surface for the step after this one. The reference surface is done, so what I need to do now is turn the recess that the boss on the spindle 
will fit in and locate against. Um, I turned this piece of 1144 down probably about two weeks ago when I made the back plate for my three jaw chuck. So this is what I'm going to use the test with. The recess is supposed to be 138 thousandths deep, but I'm actually going to turn it 158 thousandths. It's kind of hard to explain why, but hopefully once I finish this step and go on to the next step, it'll become clear. Finished this step of the turning process. I've done a little bit of cleaning just because, as you would expect, turning cast iron like this makes a real mess. The, I guess you want to call it the test piece of the spindle. Actually, if you don't put it in just right, it won't even go in, but it'll go in. It's just, I've got to guess, maybe half a thousandth clearance. Because that little tiny boss is enough to hold it in place. Like it won't fall out. I've tried it a couple times and it won't fall out. So. That's pretty good. The next step is to, I need to actually get this whole face out here, this whole exterior face that's going to actually reference against the spindle itself needs to be machined. So how I'm going to do that is with this piece of scrap, it's just a chunk of aluminum with a 3 8 hole through the center, 3 8 threaded rod, and that's going to get inserted through the center hole all the way through the spindle. And then on the back here, going to be a couple washers and a nut, obviously. And I'm just going to snug that up right at the moment. Roughly centered. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I have to spin the truck and see how how close to centered it is. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be anywhere close to perfect. Obviously, if you spin the chuck, if you spin this really fast and it's way out to the side, you're going to get a lot of vibrations. It's just a little high there, so I'll just tap that down. And for this step, that's good enough. So all I need to do is take two wrenches. And then just tighten this way down. That's good and tight. Now I can proceed to carefully loosen up the hold down clamps. Actually, I'm probably going to need another wrench because I got these on pretty tight.
went ahead, demounted the back plate, cleaned it up, brought it over here to the rotary table in the mill, got it down, got it lined up. So now I need to start drilling the holes that will actually fasten the back, uh, yeah, fasten the back plate to the chuck, and then the holes that will fasten the back plate to the spindle. I've gone and done a couple tests. I don't know if you can see it or not in the video, but I've gone and tested it and put little sharpie marks where the holes will be, and there are no holes going to, they aren't going to hit each other, and they're not going to hit the hold down, so we're good to go. steps of finishing off all this drilling is to counterbore the holes for the socket head cap screws that are going to hold the chuck fast to the back plate and then to chamfer the top of them just so they're not sharp or anything. So to do that just come down, touch off and find zero. Zero the DRO and the quill. And then I gotta go down and make the the counterbore's gotta be 375 thousandths or three eighths of an inch deep.
see the chatter, at least for me anyway. And it looks like I'm out of cutting fluid. That should be 375. Clean this up real quick and I'll check. Yep, there we go. With all the holes drilled and chamfered, the next step is to turn the OD and then bring the, um, the back plate down to the proper thickness and then machine the boss on it that the chuck will actually register against. Now off camera I've gone and I've installed studs already to mount it to the spindle. Um, I didn't think that'd be overly interesting so I just took care of that. Let me just get it on here. There we go. Um, I had to adapt <coughs> the spindle a little bit for this. The Spindle originally uses socket head cap screws to attach everything, so you have to have a little tiny Allen wrench. I think this is one like that came with the machine. I actually ended up grinding most of it off so I could get it in there. So for all my chucks and everything else like that, I've gone and just made studs for them. And then, I don't know if I can't, yeah, I can't get it out now. There's just inside where the cap head screw used to be, there's just a little bushing that I made that basically takes up the space. So you're basically not pulling a little washer like this down across the big open space and just, you know, concaving the washer in. It, does, it's, it works well. It's, it's pretty easy. So, I'll get this mounted up and tightened down, and then I'll bring the OD down to size. And I'm going to have to spread a bunch of paper towels and stuff out, or something, rags maybe, because this is going to make a huge mess. Just turning down the OD, the back plate, and I just wanted to do a little show you guys. This is um, the grit left over. I guess you I don't call it grit. It's the chips, really, but they're really small. And then they break down really, really quickly into a fine powder. Just rolling them in my hands, I can feel them breaking down. And this is what you want to keep off your ways because it's horrible. It's just like a lapping compound. It'll just destroy your ways if you don't get it off. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not like taking a you know a power grinder to it, but over time it'll wear it down. So. Do what you can to keep this stuff off your ways. I've got just shy of a quarter inch to take off the face of the faceplate, so I'm not gonna bore you with all of that because that's gonna take a while, but I did wanna show you, this is kinda how I've got my machine protected. So I've got paper towels, in this case, thick heavy duty shot paper towels, kinda wrapped in and around and over the, the uh, carriage and then tucked down underneath. That'll keep everything off and every now and then I'm just gonna have to take the shot back and suck up the excess because I mean, as you can imagine, taking a quarter inch of this off is going to produce a lot of mess. But I'll bring you back when I have it all taken care of. and that's to actually make the boss that the chuck will register against and I wanted to show you um, why I drilled the holes the way I did. So now that I've machined the face back to the pro you know the face plate to the proper thickness they started to come through and then now turning back the boss the through holes 
for the um, the bolts that'll hold the chuck fast to the back plate are now starting to expose, so it's a horrible interrupted cut. But that's why I didn't have to worry on the mill. Like I didn't have to worry about drilling through the piece and drilling into the rotary table or anything like that, just because they didn't go all the way through. So it was just one setup. I didn't have to, you know, pick the part up. I didn't have to put something underneath it. I didn't have to have some kind of sacrificial piece or anything. It was just drilled down. I just had to make sure I drilled to the appropriate depth each time. And my mill has a um, dial indicator on the, the quill, so that's fairly easy. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll turn all of this. Well, I'll turn it down pretty close to the finished diameter. Then I'll have to clean all this up because I will need to, I won't be able to have any of this covering on because to test the chuck, the chuck's actually are bigger around than the clearance over top of the carriage, so I'll have to make a cut and then back the carriage all the way off and try and test fit the chuck. So I'm going to try and get as much of it I've taken care of now as I can, because then I'm going to have to remove all of this. So I've cut it down real close. i got about, about 5,000 depth of cut to take off. The part's down. I've measured it a couple times. It's no longer so hot that I can't touch it. So this should be the last pass. And I'll take a quick a file real quick and clear up any burrs in this and I'll do a test fit. still a bunch of burrs out here on the outer edge, but I'll take care of that after the fact. Right now I just want to see about getting the actual chuck on. Let's see here. Yep. And if I shake it, I can feel just a little bit, so there's probably half a thousandths or something like that in there. I mean, it's not even coming off, so. That's it. All I gotta do now is, oh, Chamfer that outside edge and clean it up. I've cleaned everything up. I deburred the through holes here for the socket head cap screws. I chamfered everything, give everything a real nice cleaning. There's no grit left anywhere. So the last step here is to assemble it. So since my shop has a little bit of fluctuation in temperature and humidity, I'm gonna apply just a little bit of whey oil to everything. Just rub it around, put a real thin coat on because a lot of these surfaces aren't going to see the light of day for a long time. So. And I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything. They're all held together with bolts, so. There's the actual back plate. Put a little bit on the back of the chuck, just for good measure. Hopefully this will keep any rust down. I haven't had a lot of rust, but every now and then I'll get that real light, real, real light brown rust. You know, if you hit it with just a piece of scotch Brite or something, it instantly goes away. It's really just an annoyance more than anything, so there we go. Put this on. Let's see. Holes are lined up. Get this oil off my hands here. Got all the bolts started.
That one's kind of tight, actually. nice and smooth around like this so you can clamp down on it real hard. Let's try this way. That's a little bit better. Same thing with the back here. And that's it. So there, one plain back, back plate for a five inch four jaw chuck. Now I just need to go and do a really thorough cleaning of the lathe. I'm gonna take the carriage off and everything.